Neil Mehra, I'm the past president of RPQLI, ILI, and Lions Club, but I'm honored to be part of this group. I want to thank all of you dignitaries of our community to come here. Over the years, Mr. Bala had led a nationwide voter registration drive for which he interviewed very former U.S. President Gerald Ford and several congressmen, leaders, to encourage the participation of Indian community in the American election. And I remember in early 2000, we participated to arrange the Indian caucus. We were recruiting a lot of congressmen. We put a lot of effort during that time when the community was not that big. On behalf of the Indian American Voters Forum, thank you all for taking the time to join us this evening to greet our new Council General of India in New York. Please rise for a standing ovation and your thunderous applause to welcome His Excellency Vinaya Srikant Pradhani. Our new Council General New York is a career diplomat of the 2002 batch of the Indian Foreign Service. Before his current role as Council General of India in New York, he held the position of High Commissioner of India to Tanzania from August 2021 to January 2024. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present to you Ambassador Bine Shri Khan Pradhanji. On, on behalf of the entire Nassau County Judiciary, and indeed I believe the entire Judiciary of the State of New York, I want to welcome you to your new post. And I want to assure you that uh, we will share your mission, which is to ensure the safety and well-being of uh, the people that we serve, the members of the Indian American community, as well as all of those who live here in New York. Before the formation of India Caucus, the bilateral trade between India and the United States was only $4 billion. But now in 2023, last year, the trade between India and the United States is 50 times higher at $200 billion. Looking at some other historic thing about uh, India caucus, in, in 2011, Congressman Frank Pallon of the, in from the House uh, had a resolution passed supporting India's bid for permanent seat in the United Nations Security Council. Now I also want to bring it to the attention, this is a caucus for India and Indian Americans. There is a major issue uh, which the community has. I just mentioned to Tom, Congressman Tom Saucy, you know, the, uh, there are 1.6 million people waiting for uh, green card. And of that 1.1 are Indians who are contributing great deal, great contribution to America's economy in IT, engineering, but they, they can't get a visa, they, they can't get a green card. So that is a major issue which I think our congressional uh, members should take it up. Four, you're not counting. Three, Three two, two, one. one. I was a lot younger in that picture. Council General, we'll shake hands in front of our pictures. We used to have one uh, organization called Indo-American Forum for Political Education in 90s. During my leadership in 92, 93, because before that, in the early 80s and late 80s, uh, there was a lot of uh, anti India bashing uh, in the USA. So, and we wanted to increase the trade as well as the cooperation. So we convinced late Congressman of New York, late Gary Ackerman, and our New Jersey Congressman Frank Pallone to start the India Caucus. So really India Caucus started in 1993. <laughs> रहेंगे नए चांद होगा न तारे रहेंगे मगर हम हमेशा तुम्हारे रहेंगे नए चांद हो ग
come. You're nobody till somebody loves you. You're nobody till somebody cares. You may be king, you may possess the world and its gold, but gold won't bring you happiness when you're growing old. The world still is the same, you'll never change it. But as far as a song shine above, you'll know about it till some but he loves you, so find yourself somebody to love. Thank you. <laughs> Ambassador, General Counsel, we want to welcome you. We're so happy to have you here in New York. Uh, I know you've traveled all over the world as part of your job, and we want to make sure that you have a great experience while you're here in New York. We have a wonderful Indian American diaspora here in the United States of America that have accomplished so many different things. And uh, you're going to have a great experience while you're here in New York. There's such incredible talent in this room alone, but certainly throughout the entire area uh, that you're responsible for under your jurisdiction. So uh, I, we know that you're a, an ambassador uh, as the general counsel, uh, but you have a lot of ambassadors in the Indian American community that represent India so well here in the United States of America. If you look at the, you know, 60% of Americans do not graduate from college. But if you look at the Indian American diaspora, everybody graduates from higher education. They're in every field of endeavor, doing very, very well, upwardly mobile. Let's put our okay. hands together. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together to please honor our honoree, none other than Mr. Virinder Bhalla. So much you have done for us. This flag is thrown over the United States Capitol in honor of Virinder Bhalla. <laughs> Thank you, Congressman Swazi, for this extraordinary honor. Receiving a congressional award is a very momentous occasion in my life. I am deeply humbled and grateful for this recognition. However, I stand here today not as an individual achiever, but as part of a team. All my efforts and accomplishments in the community service have been profoundly supported and sustained by someone very special in my life, my wife, Ratna Bhalla. It's my honor to present to okay. all the distinguished today. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, you getting elected to the Congress and the Indian media are writing a caption, friend of India being elected to the US Congress. So, so, uh, so that was, that was uh, your identity in India, a friend of India. And I'm sure, you know, with your visits to India, your meeting with Prime Minister, your uh, you're championing the cause of India-America friendship, uh, and today we could see your friendship with so many of our community leaders. Uh, I think uh, that's a very well-deserved title, Friend of India. So last year we touched $2 billion, $200 billion of bilateral trade, and, and uh, you know, uh, Dr. Parikh was mentioning about a very insignificant $4 billion of trade some time back. So 50 times jump in the trade. Investment is growing. We have $40 billion of investment from India to United States and $63 billion of investment in India in the last 23 years. And if you look at the flow of money from India alone, like 354,000 students studying in this country, you, you can you know, imagine the money that is flowing in. My estimate is uh, if you keep a $50,000 figure for student, it's about $19 billion of money coming in from India to this country, to the universities. And of course, you know, that's, that's a huge uh, uh, you know, talent cooperation that is happening. And you, if you talk about tourism, last year we received 23% of our foreign tourists from United States. Again, as number one source of our foreign tourists. Uh, if you look at technology, uh, I would say now we have come to a stage when we are uh, cooperating on the critical technologies. Last year, the two governments launched something called Initiative of Critical and Emerging Technology, I, uh, ICIT. And the two national security advisors are coordinating that. And we are now cooperating on critical technologies like space, biotechnology, quantum, AI, you name it. The frontier technologies, we are not uh, cooperating on that.